Father, take us under your wings, Lord. We thank you for that sense of protection, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and it's not just a sense of protection, Lord. Father, you have made a promise to us as a nation. You have made a promise to us as a people. Father, Lord Jesus, because the nation is composed of people. And Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for, Lord, protecting your people. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for protecting us, Lord. Father, Lord, our nation is composed of property. We thank you for preservation of property, Lord Jesus. Father, our nation is composed of resources. We thank you for protection of our resources, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord Jesus, we pray that every sickness, Lord Jesus, that, Father, you step in. Every sickness, Lord, that you would step in. Father, every disease, as we know it, Lord, that you would step in. And even the unknown, Father, Lord, the diseases that go beyond the borders of our knowledge, Lord. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you go before us. Lord, even though, Lord, because of this illness, this situation, as a responsible people, Lord Jesus, we have to manage how we gather. And Father, Lord Jesus, stipulations have been put in place to ensure the safety of the people of this nation. And so, Father, even as we respect those stipulations this morning, Father, we pray that as our people are in their homes this morning, worshiping with us from their homes, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you go with them. Father, Lord, we know that we enjoy, Lord, each other's company. And Father, today, though, as we have had to make a transition to enjoy each other's company, Lord Jesus, through the medium of social media, through the various social media platforms. Father, you have in essence, Lord, pushed us to the place where we have taken church, not just to those who come to visit us, but Father, now those who come to visit us are in their homes. And you have placed us, Lord, in a space where you have put us in a space where now our gospel, this glorious gospel is streaming to the world at large. Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your hand of preservation. And Father, even though we cannot physically come together this morning, as we have encouraged our people to stay in their homes, Lord Jesus, because of this plague, Lord, we thank you that we, Lord Jesus, can still connect through this medium of social media, through this medium of the internet. We thank you for those, Lord, I want to say a special thank you, Lord, for those who have worked tirelessly, oh Father, to make this possible. For all our technical staff, the people who made this possible behind the scenes. For those who worked hard, oh Lord, to put things in place, Lord. Father, for us to comply with the measures, Lord. I thank you for them. I thank you for the men and women, Lord Jesus, who worked tirelessly behind the scenes. Those who made it possible for us, Lord Jesus, to connect via these media platforms. Father, may you bless them and their families, Lord Jesus, for this input. And even now, Lord, as we get ready to go into your word, Father, Lord, may the entrance of your word bring light, Lord Jesus. And Father, Lord, then that light comes into our lives, Lord. Father, may we breathe life, may it breathe life into us. Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. Hide us, Lord. I will be still and know that you are God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. And we get, we get into your word. Father, may you bless us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Reverend Dr. David Jackson from the Kokie Open Bible Church in Trinidad and Tobago. I just want to welcome you to our live stream this morning. We have a circumstance where internationally the coronavirus has been running rampant throughout the world. And as a responsible people, we have taken steps to not gather together in church. There needs to be social distancing, and so we have taken the responsible step. However, this glorious gospel must go out. And so, your pastor may not have you with him sitting down in church this morning. 
but from the comfort of your homes. I thank God that we could live stream and so we are able to connect with you in your homes through the medium of the internet this morning. Again, I want to say special thanks for those who came before and worked behind the scenes to set this up so pastor could communicate with you this morning. Thank you for all you know yourselves who came and did this for us. We thank you for coming, those who did. And we thank you for what you have done for us so that this could be possible to reach our members in church this morning and the membership at large who may view what God has given us this morning. I want to get right into the word of God this morning. And if you may, I'd like you to turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 and 2. As I shared this morning, God's promise to his people in this time of difficulty. Hallelujah. Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 and 2. If you can, if you can find it in your Bibles, be it on your phone or your hard copy Bible. And it reads like this. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. He says, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. <laughs> and verse 3, the first part, it says, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Hallelujah. Father, we pray that you bless the, the word that I'm going to share this morning. The word that I'm convinced, Lord Jesus, you have given to me to share with your people today. Bless your word to your people today, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. God promises. This promise God made here, ladies and gentlemen. He made to Jacob. And he said, he is the God who formed you. Speaking of the concept of creation, we believe. That man was created. Man is a created being. That's what we believe. And so the context of the scripture, he says, Oh, Jacob. He's telling Jacob, I'm the one that created thee. I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. And here in the context, God is speaking to a people who have made a decision to commit their lives to him. And hear what he says. This is his promise. He said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Hmm. That is a very powerful promise, ladies and gentlemen. Very powerful promise. You are... Imagine you are in waters where you may be in a small boat and there's tempest all around. The Lord is promising that he will not allow the waters to overflow you. In other words, he's saying, I will not allow you to drown. He's saying you will pass through the fires or, or the fiery situation. And I will ensure, oh my, I will ensure that you will not be burned. In other words, he was ensuring that you will not be destroyed. He said, this is the promise to his people. But I want to ask you, ladies and gentlemen, how can God achieve this? How? What is the mechanism? How can we access this promise of the Lord? I want you to go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 in the New Testament. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. So God makes these promises that to some may seem far-fetched. You say, Pastor, how could God achieve them? What is the mechanism that he would use? You know, in education they will tell you that everything has a process. There's a process that runs and drives everything. 
as you notice, another way of expressing it is everything has an operating system. There's an operating system that drives everything. We live in a day of technology. And I'm sure you recognize it with your telephones and different things for various programs to run. They often tell you, download this application. Download that application because you need this application for this particular this particular process to work. You need that platform. And once you download that platform, then you can have access to this platform, be it a video or be it whatever. There's a process. There's a process. What's the mechanism? What's the mechanism for God to allow us to access this process? Ah, ladies and gentlemen. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 puts it this way. It says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. God has indicated to us that for us to be able to access certain things in life, we must have faith. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, faith is a foundation concept. It's a foundation concept that we must all understand. The scripture describes it in Hebrews as the substance of things that you hope for, the evidence of things not seen. So it means there's a, there's a philosophy where what you, where you want to go or what you believe in God for is not currently before you. And so there's a mechanism, there's an operating system that would bring what you desire from the realm of the invisible into the realm of the concrete. And the mechanism that God says he needs from you, he says, give him faith. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have faith, if you believe you can do something, it motivates your emotion, it motivates your mindset, it motivates the way you, you, you function, and it gives you another concept called drive. It comes out of the foundation of faith or an operating system of faith. And the scripture says that in order to access, in order to access this promise in Isaiah, we need to get the operating system of faith. But not just faith in anything. He says, faith in Almighty God. But I want to say something to you. Faith has an enemy. Faith has an enemy. The scripture says that Satan's aim is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the enemy Satan wants to get all of us in a space where we become dysfunctional, where we cannot function at all, where we cannot move from where we are. There's so many people in the world today that have been hit by the plague of depression. They end up in depression, a space of depression where they just can't seem to get the engine room of their mind working. They can't seem to find that space to go at things because all faith is lost. There's an enemy to faith. And if you turn to, if you turn to 2 Timothy 1, 7, 2 Timothy 1, 7, you see that enemy. 2 Timothy 1 7. Turn with me to 2 Timothy 1 7. And it says here, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to put to you, the enemy of faith is fear. Satan has spent a lot of time over the ages working on establishing fear in the heart of man. This creation of man, if we have faith, we are driven. If we have faith, we are driven to do what's good. But if you have fear, fear is the poison that shuts down faith. Fear is the poison that shuts you down from being able to function. Fear puts you in a zone where you cannot move. Whereas faith 
gets you operational. Faith can make you see options. Faith can make you look at a situation that everybody else is seeing as hopeless and you can see opportunity. That's what faith can do. But the enemy of faith, the poison to faith, is fear. And God spends a lot of time trying to communicate with us that we need to tap into faith. But just as we tap into faith, there is the fight that comes from fear. Huh. But God says, there's a way to defeat fear. And he said it in this very same verse. He said, we need to have the power of God. We need to have the love of God. And we need to allow God to establish a sound mind. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us power. He has given us love. He has given us a sound mind. But to be able to tap into that, you've got to believe. You've got to give him that faith. You've got to connect with him and give him that faith. I want to say to you, in the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 31, turn to that scripture. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. And it says here, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Ha, ah, boy. The context of this scripture here. The, the apostles Peter and John were imprisoned. Huh. They were imprisoned. And whilst they were imprisoned for their faith, huh, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And because of the Holy Spirit, they began to speak with boldness, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to you, right, that God's Holy Spirit gives us the courage and the boldness. Where does faith come from? Hmm. The believer has to understand. We will, and everyone, I would like you and the Koki Open Bible, and I'd like the world at large to know we were created by God. He has revealed that we were created by Almighty God. Secondly, if we understand our Creator, there's a way to connect with Him. The scripture says, He God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. If we connect with God by accepting Jesus Christ of our Lord, as our Lord and Savior, if we connect by accepting Jesus Christ of our Lord, as our Lord and Savior, we are able to tap into that mechanism. Ladies and gentlemen, faith in Jesus Christ. Faith in Jesus Christ. Faith in God. That's the foundation. And once you put your faith and your trust in, in, in Almighty God, then it opens up. It opens up that hope. It opens up that power. It opens up that love. It opens up that sound mind. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to put to you today, in the midst of the medical crisis over the world and this medical challenge with the coronavirus, I want to encourage you, put your faith in Jesus Christ today. Put your faith in the God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who created us. Put your faith in him today. Put your faith in him today. And once you put your faith in him, then you will have power. You will have love. You will have a sound mind. You will have the courage. He will give you that hope. The scripture says, hope maketh not a shame. And it's very important. When you face a circumstance, do not face it with fear. Get rid of the poison. The antidote to that poison of fear is faith in Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, over the world wide web, ladies and gentlemen of the Koki Open Bible family, I want to say to you, let us establish ourselves today in the midst of this challenge by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. 
I want to ask you a question, sir, madam, all across this world. There may be an atmosphere right now of great fear because of the illness, and we as a church, we as a church, Wokey Open Bible Church and the Open Bible family, encourage every one of our membership to demonstrate responsible behavior. However, we want to just tell you, part of being responsible means you need to have faith in God. Faith allows your mind to be clear. It puts away all the, the dross and the confusion. And it allows you to be able to think clearly. We would like to encourage you also. Have a spirit of love. Have a spirit of love for your neighbor. And demonstrate that love by the way you function, by the way you operate in this season of difficulty. You may have excess. And if you have excess, remember those who may not have at all. But I want to ask you a question, sir, madam, over the World Wide Web right now. Are you today in your home and you are, you are feeling a sense of hopelessness? Is there fear? Has fear overtaken you? I want to ask you, has fear overtaken your spirit? Have you found yourself unable to function? Have you found that you, 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 you can't seem to find your way? Have you found that fear is crippling your ability to move? your ability to function. I want to encourage you today. Give your life to Jesus. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Get that connection to Almighty God and faith will arise. I'd like to ask us all to bow our heads and close our eyes as we pray this morning. I want to give you an opportunity, sir, madam. If you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He said, He didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, all across this world, if today you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you today to put your faith in Jesus Christ. And God has made it accessible and very simple, sir, madam. He said, all you have to do is just ask him in faith believing and you shall receive. With all heads bowed and all eyes closed. If you would like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like you to say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of everything that I have said and done that is contrary to you and to your word. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart. I believe, God, that you are able to change my life and to change my circumstance. So I ask you, Lord, to come into my life today, right now, and make me a new creature. In Jesus' name, amen. Sir, madam, son, daughter, over the wild world, over the, 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 the web, over the international circuit. If you have prayed that prayer this morning, the word of God says that you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you are a new creature. The scripture says the old will pass away and the new will come forth. We want to encourage you to contact our office. You can either... You can either email us, all right? We will, we will place our email on the, the web, 
And you can email us at Koki Open Bible Church. And we would like to communicate with you so that you, we can encourage you to grow in faith with Christ and that hope will arise in your life. This is Reverend Dr. David Jackson saying to you, I love you, God bless you, and let faith arise. Amen.